Okay, so here's what you gotta know. We're gonna be looking at the differences between Pokemon Red in the US versus Japan. The reason why we're gonna be doing that is because it started off in Japan as Pokemon Red and Green, and so the sprite works, a lot of things, in fact, were very, very different in Japan on their first go around. And then a year later, they came out with Pokemon Blue. And that became the basis for all the sprite work that you saw in the US version. So the versions of Pokemon Blue in both the US and Japan are incredibly similar. It would be a very boring video. But because of that, red in the US and Japan are very, very different. And it's going to be incredibly fun to show you all the differences between the two. Let's get started. All right, so like usual, we're gonna break this off into six categories. Normally we start off with box differences, but I just waved them around your face for 40 seconds there. So I'm gonna give you a little bit of a break and we're gonna start off with environment details. Oh my god, you guys, even the freaking water is different! <laughs> you will not believe just how different the environment sprites are between the US and the Japanese version. It's insane! At a quick glance, everything might seem the same, but when you take a closer look, you'll start to realize that almost everything is different. The windows on buildings has shading in the US version. The Japanese version uses a lot more cross-hatching and dots on things like grass, roofs, and dirt patches, whereas the US version has a much more intentional design. Trees look a lot more detailed in the US version. Wooden and stone posts have a slightly different design. The water in Japan has a circular design pattern to its waves, whereas the US technically has both. The majority of the water in the US version has traditional waves, but still uses the Japanese water design for the SS Anne area. As you can see here, the stone tiles have a completely different design, as well as the wooden planks. Even the signposts had to be different for some reason. Clearly, somebody on the dev team got some notes to say you have to change all the sprites to quote unquote look better, and in some cases, like here with the signposts, they were just like, well, what do we do? Uh, well, I guess we're going to change it from a signpost with two poles sticking out to one pole sticking out, and it's hanging on the post. But by far, my favorite change between the two versions are the flowers. In the Japanese version they look more like daisies and they only have two frames of animation whereas in the US version they look like tulips and they have three different frames of animation. We also can't forget about the tall grass. The tall grass was the first thing I ever noticed. Just like anything else here it has a completely separate design for the sake of being different. And some of the signs on the exteriors of buildings are different like for example Poke for the Poke Center uses different lettering and although it says shop in the Japanese version for some reason it was changed to Mart in the US. But just in case someone asks all the interior sprites are generally the same, including caves. Except for one cave, that is. Uh, Cerulean Cave is completely different, though not by sprite visuals. Instead, the layout of the caves are in no way the same. Having to go through both caves, I personally found the cave in the Japanese version to be a little bit easier to navigate. I did try to walk through both of them at the same time. That was a pain in the butt. But not only did I divide my attention to playing both caves at the same time and ended up at Mewtwo in the Japanese one first, when I tried to focus and just get through the US one, it still took me a lot longer to find Mewtwo. It felt like there was a lot more mazes and a lot more dead ends. All right, next up is bizarre sprite details. Now I need to give a separate category for this because we're gonna go through a lot of Pokemon later. In fact, all 151. And I didn't want these sprites in particular to get lost in the fold. So first up, we got Alakazam here. And in the US, Alakazam looks pretty normal. In fact, if you move over to the Japanese side, he looks pretty normal too, until you kind of focus on his forehead. Oh my God. Now it's a little hard to see with the white on yellow, so I'm gonna change the hues so you get a better look at it. But as you can see here, it's not really a sheen that's on his forehead like the other de-evolved forms. Instead, it seems to be a star, which is interesting because Kadabra canonically does have a star on his forehead, and it looks as though Alakazam was originally supposed to have the Star of David on his forehead. I'm not joking. But then next up is Mew. In the US, Mew's sprite's not amazing looking. A lot of the sprites in the first gen don't look that awesome, but at least Mew looks somewhat like Mew. It's, he's kind of cute, but obviously his later designs look a lot better. The Japanese one though is really interesting, isn't it? You can tell me what that looks like. I won't tell you, but I will tell you that when you rip the sprite, you can see that he has whiskers and below on his stomach, it kind of looks like udders. It could just be sprite work that's giving the wrong impression. It's hard to say, but I'm just reporting on what I'm seeing here. And then we've got Ekans. Now, a couple of Pokemon ended up getting better designed in the future. Pinsir, for example, has these beady eyes that are shown in both versions. The eyes ended up getting changed in later games, but I bring that up because in the case of Ekans, he actually had beady eyes as well in the Japanese version. 
similar to Lickitung. It also looks like he's about to fire his laser or go pog, I don't know which. Meanwhile, in the US, he's got a different set of eyes that I guess is a little bit closer to what would be the final design. Still not great looking, he's still without a doubt a janky Gen 1 spray. But between the two, I suppose this one hits the mark a little closer than the other. And we'll get to the next subject in just a second. I just gotta do the thing and say, hey, subscribing literally saves the channel from going under. I'm in this new weird algorithm situation where half the views have to come from subscribers. So if you hit subscribe, it forces the algorithm to show the video to other new people. It helps out a ton. and also increases the chances of you seeing a future video to about a one in 14 chance, even if you don't check the sub box. So thanks for having the patience for letting me get that out of the way. And thanks a lot. I think now's a good time to go back to the boxes. Now, like you saw at the start of the video, there are three different versions of Gen 1 Pokemon, not counting yellow. I always count that as a 0.5 entry whenever they do something like that. And you'll see that the US boxes have a subtitle of Gotta Catch Em All, whereas the Japanese version says Pocket Monsters underneath, and inside the circle it says the Pocket Monster Trainer. The top and left binders of the US copies have a picture of Gengar and a crying orphan. Definitely a good way to sell some extra copies. Whereas the Japanese version did not, but each version of the game is personalized in Japan, showing the de-evolved forms on the back that correspond with the color. The same thing can be said for the manuals as well. And let's talk about the manuals. The US version decided to add some character to its manuals by making them look like trainer guides, which includes fake metal rings on the ends of it. The insides, however, use about the same amount of artwork between the two regions. A core difference to the US version is that it has empty slots for all 150 Pokemon. I remember buying Pokemon stickers from Walmart and collecting them by sticking them onto the corresponding slots. The Japanese version, not too much to say about its manual, honestly, but there is one thing in Japan that they got that we did not, and I'm pretty jealous, honestly. It's an entire map of Kanto. Now I wanted to show you what this map looks like in full, as well as give you a couple of close-up shots, just so you can see how much detail there is to this thing. It's pretty freaking awesome, and it's a nice little incentive to pick up a Japanese version of Pokemon. This map was included with all three versions, including blue. And lastly, the Japanese versions also came with an insert, advertising accessories, as well as other Game Boys. It's obviously not the coolest thing in here, but it's still, you know, a thing. Wouldn't want to leave it out. And lastly, the cartridges themselves. Over in Japan, all the cartridges had that uniform gray cart, whereas in the US, they color-coded them. It's hard to imagine owning a copy of Pokemon without the colored cart, but yeah, I guess that's just how it rolls in Japan. All right, let's talk about the localization script. In the US version, there's an old man in the middle of Viridian City, and if you try to pass, he says, you can't go through here. And then if you talk to the woman that's next to him, she says, oh, grandpa, don't be so mean. He hasn't had his coffee. But in Japan, this old man's drunk. That part where you try to pass, he says, Urg. Hold on a sec! Just hear me out. Then the character starts to step away. He says, Hey, I said don't go! And it seems that the lady next to him is not related in the Japanese version, saying, Eh, this old guy fell asleep here. What can you do? Just gonna have to wait until he wakes up. And then when you deliver Oak's package and talk to him after he's sobered up, he says, Oof. Looks like I got drunk. My head hurts. So, you know, that's pretty insane. But all right, let's go through all the Pokemon from the 151 that have English names that are different from the US release. Weedle is known as Beetle. Kakuna is known as Cocoon. Beedrill is known as Spear. Pidgeotto is known as Pigeon. Sandshrew is known as Sand. Sandslash is known as Sandpan. Clefable is known as Pixie. Rapidash is known as Gallop. Magnemite is known as Coil. Magneton is known as Rare Coil. And now we're going to be talking about a little bit of an odd case here. Ekans and Ghastly. Ekans in Japanese is Arbo, which I'm sure you're thinking to yourself, that's not an English word. Well, its evolution form is the same between both the US and Japan, Arbok. And Arbok backwards is Cobra. And so for Ekans in Japan, they just got rid of the K and it's Obra backwards, signifying that the evolution form completes the name. Same goes for Ghastly. In Japan, it's known as Ghost, but then it evolves into Haunter, which in Japan, it's known as Ghost. You see they just added the T there? I thought that was really interesting. Anyways, Drowsy is known as Sleepy. Hypno is known as Sleeper. Krabby is just known as Crab. Chansey is known as Lucky. Vaporeon is Showers. Flareon is Booster. Articuno is Freezer. Zapdos is Thunder. And Moltres is Fire. Hiya! All right, and now before we move on to all 151 Pokemon sprites, let's talk about miscellaneous stuff. So here we go. The Pokédex interface is pretty different. The Japanese version gets away with using one row, whereas the US version has to use two rows because it has a lot more characters. 
The battle menu has an odd swap as well. For the US version, selecting a Pokemon is in the upper right hand corner and the items are in the bottom left, whereas in the Japanese version, selecting a Pokemon is in the bottom left and the items are in the upper right. And then there's the map. Now you can either see this with Fly, or you can just look at a map in one of the random houses. But for some reason, the Japanese one has a border. It uses the same sprites as some of the paths in the game, whereas the US one uses no border. And the interface for the text is different as well. This allows you to see a better idea of how the map is supposed to look, whereas the Japanese version uses the same color palette for its borders and in turn can make some confusing geometry. And now let's talk about the Super Game Boy borders. Now this is the one thing I'm gonna break my rule on. We've been looking at the differences between Pokemon Red in the US and Japan, but for this, let's look at all the borders. One big difference you're gonna see between the US and the Japanese borders is that Pocket Monsters is left out. It's just omitted in the US version. They did not replace it with Pokemon. They got kind of lazy there, whatever. Don't think anybody cared or noticed, but in Japan they actually had pocket monsters written out on every single border for the Super Game Boy, depending on which version you used. A fun little extra fact that I'll point out here, all the sprites on the borders are based off of the Japanese versions, not the US versions. So Kangaskhan, Clefairy, and Pidgey, all those sprites are based directly off of the original sprites of the Japanese version, despite the fact that the same border was used for the US Red as well. And lastly on this subject, Pokemon Green doesn't exist in the US, and so sprites of Pikachu and others do not show up in any US release of Pokemon. Instead, blue is blue and red is red, and blue got a completely different border. And the last thing I want to talk about as far as miscellaneous stuff is that for some reason, the sprites in Vermilion City, for where you make this Pokemon trade, are two different sprites. Nowhere else in the game are the sprites any different. They don't look any different, they're not swapped out to be different, but here we have a man in a hat, and then in the other version we seem to have a little girl. I have no idea how this change came about or why it came about, it's just one of those weird little oddities. And now we're going to look at all 151 Pokemon and contrast all the differences between the two versions. I, I, it's a crazy, crazy idea, but let's see how it goes. With Bulbasaur, the Japanese version is standing in place while the American one is jumping. In the US one, Ivysaur is standing straight up. In the Japanese version, the trunk for Venusaur is way longer, making for a very awkward looking sprite. Charmander looks a little happier in the Japanese version, with a foot kicking off in the air. Charmeleon has a really weird thing going on with his arms in the Japanese version, which looks slightly better in the US version. Charizard is breathing fire in the Japanese version, and the US version one looks a little more menacing. Squirtle in the Japanese version looks like he wants to go in for a hug, whereas the US one looks like he's prancing. The Japanese sprite for War Turtle seems to be screaming, whereas the US one looks like he's in a battle pose. Black Blastoise in the Japanese version just looks way better. Uh, I guess what they were trying to go for here with the US one was stand upright and have a more menacing pose. It didn't really pay off though. Caterpie is nearly identical, but you can still tell that it's different from something like the tip of the tail. Metapod looks way better in the Japanese version. The eyes look better in the US one though. So honestly, if they could just combine the two features together, it would be a perfect sprite. Butterfree has a slightly different pose in the US. It's just kicking up his feet instead of draping them down in the Japanese one. Weedle looks a little more proportionate in the Japanese version. Over in the US, his head looks a little more bulbous. Kakuna doesn't make any sense in the US version. He is a near perfect sprite in Japan, but in the US one, they seem to interpret a part of his body as claws. It's strange. Beedrill has an upright position position in the Japanese version, whereas in the US, it looks like he's more in a flying pose. Pidgey in the Japanese version seems to be crying out, whereas Pidgey in the US version just has a very neutral pose. The same exact thing can be said for Pidgeotto. The Japanese version of Pidgeot looks like he's continuing the trend with a cry, whereas the US one looks like he's taunting his opponent. It's very strange. Japanese version of Rattata seems to be pointing at the opponent, whereas the US one is very, very similar, but it's just standing there. Japanese version of Raticate has his mouth closed, whereas the US one has his mouth open, doing a cry. Japanese version of Spiro seems to have his foot sticking out with a cry. The US version just seems to be looking at the player. Both versions of Firo seem to be flapping its wings, but the US one seems to have its mouth open. Ekans has the same pose in both versions, but he seemed to have gotten a huge makeover, like I mentioned earlier. Arbok in Japan seems to be facing the opposing Pokemon, whereas Arbok in the US seems to look at the player. Pikachu in the US version has smaller cheeks and floppier ears. Seems the artist was in a bit of a rush because the proportions are looking way off, whereas in Japan, it looks pretty great. Well, at least for a Gen 1. Raichu looks generally the same, just in two different poses. It almost looks like if you animated it together, he'd be dancing. Sanchu in the Japanese version is sitting straight up. 
and Sanshu in the US version is sitting down. Now with Sand Slash, it sort of shows off this problem with a lot of the sprites from the Japanese version, where it's drawn to be a little bit too bulky. The US one hides this a lot better with the posing. Nidoran female in the Japanese version seems to have a much stronger cry. US one seems to just kind of have like a bit of an egg shape. It also seems to be missing the horn on its head as opposed to the Japanese version, which thought to include it. Nidorita in the US version is on all fours whereas in Japan is on its hind legs. Nido Queen in Japan is sporting that much chunkier design. Again, as we go through these comparisons, you'll see that the US one cleans it up a bit more, tightens it up a bit. Nido Ram Male in the US version seems to be jumping, whereas in the Japanese version, he seems to be standing in place. Nido Reno has two very dynamic poses between both versions, but as you can see, the Japanese version looks like it's in mid-strike. Nido King in the Japanese version once again has a bulky design, cleaned up much better for the US version. Clefairy in the Japanese version has a neutral pose, whereas Clefairy in the US version seems to be jumping in the air. Clefable has just about the same pose between both versions. The US version has both arms up in the air as opposed to the Japanese one, and the feet are swapped. Vulpix got a much more cleaned up design for the US version, whereas the Japanese version seems to lack a lot of detail. Nine Tails in the US version seems to have its head down, whereas in the Japanese version, the eyes are closed and the head is tilted up, both breathing fire. Jigglypuff is an interesting case. It looks like she was altered from her original sprite. You can see near identical pixel placement on the ears, as well as the tuft of hair. However, there is still some altercation here, of course, the mouth and the right eye in the US version seems to kind of curl up a bit more for some reason. Wigglytuff is a very interesting case. It looks like the Japanese version has misproportioned eyes. I'm sure the artist was trying to go for some depth. The US version has darker feet, more of a curve on the tuft on its head, and the eyes are drawn on a lot better. Zubat in the Japanese version had a smaller design to the head, whereas in the US version they made a much larger head. Golbat in the Japanese version was much smaller on the body base, and it also did not include a tongue. The US version, uh, not the best looking design, but there you can see the eyes are much bigger and that tongue is moist. Oddish in the US version seems to be jumping and also has a smile, whereas in the Japanese version, he looks more unassuming. Gloom in the Japanese version has a more neutral pose, whereas in the US one, it seems to be jumping. Vile Plume once again has a very neutral pose. The angling of the flower is not quite right. It's clearly being inorganically tilted, whereas in the US one, it's holding it up and it's tilted a little bit better. Paris in the Japanese version looks utterly fantastic. It's a shame that it got changed the way it did in the US one, but that mostly has to do with the angling of the body. Also, the spots on the mushrooms are different colors. Parasect in the Japanese version is angled upwards so you can see the face a little better, whereas in the US version, it's angled downwards with the claws protruding over the lips of the mushroom cap. Venonat in the Japanese version has a neutral pose, whereas in the US version, it seems to be dancing. Some aspects to the sprite are near identical, like the mouth and the eyes. Venomoth seems to be attacking in the US version, and the wings in the Japanese version seem to have some cross hatching to the shadowy areas of the sprite. Diglett in the Japanese version is more stout and cute looking, whereas in the US version his nose is more bulbous and features more dirt around the base. Doug Trio in the Japanese version shows more height to each Diglett, whereas in the US version there seems to be more symmetry involved. In the Japanese version, Meowth is posed like a lucky cat, whereas in the US version, he seems to be cleaning himself. Persian in the US version is in a sitting neutral pose, whereas in the Japanese version it appears to be ready to strike. Psyduck in the US version has its head tilted more, and in the Japanese version it appears to have puffy cheeks. Golduck between both versions seem to have very different looking eyes. Of course, the pose is much, much different. Mankey unfortunately never looks good between either version. It does seem that the Japanese one is slightly better shaped, whereas with the US one, I don't, it looks like a five-year-old drew the limbs, it's crazy. Primeape in the Japanese version seems to have a lot more stray hairs, whereas the US version has better proportions for its nose and eyes, and the eyes are bigger as well. Growlithe has about the same design, but just two different poses. Arcanine in the Japanese version once again has that oddly chunky chibi kind of look with the really stout limbs. It's masked a lot better in the US version. Poliwag in the US version looks at the opposing Pokemon, whereas in the Japanese version, he looks directly at the player. Poliwhirl has a clenched fist, whereas in the Japanese version, he just kind of stands there confused. Poliwrath in the US version seems to be posed like a Power Ranger, whereas in the Japanese one, the eyes are thinner, the hypno circle seems to be a lot smaller, and his pose is more puffed out. Abra in the US version looks more like a cartoon, whereas in the Japanese version, he looks eerily more realistic. Kadabra has some really odd posing in the US version, especially with the legs. 
There also seems to be an odd black line across the two ends of his mustache. All in all, the Japanese sprite is much, much better. Alakazam in the US version raises the spoons above his head, and the mustache between the two are designed much differently. Machop in the Japanese version is flexing and is better proportioned. Over in the US one, it seems that a five-year-old once again designed this. I don't know what happened here. <laughs> Machoke has two different flexes between the two versions. It should also be noted that for some reason, the right eye of Machoke in the US version seems to be missing his pupil. Machamp has a much more dynamic pose in the US version, once again concealing that weird, fat, chibi look that is very clearly present in the Japanese version. The US version of Bellsprout has dark circles around its eyes, whereas the Japanese version has lighting that makes it look like it's crying. The US version of Weeping Bell has a fatter, wider design. This is one of those rare moments here where the Japanese version actually has a more slender look with better shading as well. Victory Bell has a more neutral pose in Japan and the US version has a fatter spear on its tail. Tentacle looks very, very similar. A lot of the general outline was reused, but the shading was completely changed and the positions of the eyes and the tentacles were also altered. Tentacruel in the Japanese version has its arms up, whereas in the US version it has its arms crossed. And for you sticklers out there, yeah, I guess I've had tentacles. <laughs> Geodude in the Japanese version had a weird design that for some reason carried over into the US one. The US design seems to look a lot more smug than the Japanese one. Graveler ended up with more of an egg shape, whereas the Japanese version was pretty spot on. Golem was not changed too much between the two designs. In the US version, he has his mouth wide open and his fists clenched, but much of the pixel work on the Japanese sprite was carried over for this one. Ponyta in the Japanese version looks a lot more elegant, also some better use of shading, whereas the US version looks a little more doughy. Once again, Rapidash looks a little more elegant in the Japanese version, whereas in the US version, it seems to be in motion with its head turned backwards and a little more cartoony. Slowpoke in the US has much wider eyes and is laying flat on its stomach, whereas in the Japanese version, he's in a neutral pose. Slowbro in the US version is very different, showcasing the shell on its tail, whereas the Japanese version seems to feature the slowpoke a lot more. Magnemite has a more tilted design in the US version. Magneton in the US version seems to be dechunkified, and it looks like they attempted to have more dynamic posing with, with the other two Magnemites that are attached to the front featured one. Farfetch'd in the US one has the stick in its mouth, whereas in the Japanese one, it's holding it like a weapon and has a very oddly detailed beak. Doduo in the US version has smaller feet than the one that's used in the Japanese version. But once again, I think that if you flip these back and forth, it would look like it's dancing. The Dodrio in the US version has a much more dynamic pose. Once again, in the Japanese version, it seems to have a neutral pose. Seal in the Japanese version is laying flat, whereas in the US version, it's sitting up. Dugong seems to have a more elegant pose in the Japanese version whereas the pose in the US version seems to be more simplified. Grimer's detail in the US version seems to be a lot better, just seems that they put a lot more effort into the US one. It seems like they tried to do a similar attempt with Muck. Deciding which one looks better though is a little bit more up for a debate. The Japanese version of Shelter is just looking at the player, whereas the US one is looking at the Pokemon opponent and shifted at an angle. Cloyster is facing the player in the US version and would be facing the opponent in the Japanese version. Ghastly's expression in the US version is angled downwards, whereas in the Japanese version he seems more level. Haunter is looking at the player in the Japanese version, whereas in the US version he's looking at the Pokemon opponent. The same exact thing could be said for Gengar, I just want to point out, he looks freaking weird and fuzzy in the Japanese version. Onyx in the Japanese version seems to have a lot more detail, a much better dynamic pose, but the face of the US one looks closer to what would be the final design. Drowsy's palms are open in the US version and facing downward in the Japanese. Hypno's nose is looking a little more odd in the Japanese one, whereas in the US version, he seems to be slimmed down quite a bit and at a more interesting angle. For Krabby, it seems as though the claws were just flipped and the limbs were redrawn to match the new pose. The eyes are now facing downward as well as opposed to upward. Kingler in the Japanese version is going for some more depth, whereas in the US version, there seems to be a boatload of symmetry. You could literally cut that thing in half and then put it against a mirror and it would just make the same exact image. Voltorb in the Japanese version is looking a lot more suave, whereas in the US version, he looks a little more angry. Electro does not look that much different between versions. His gaze is just slightly more to the right in the US version. The US version also lacks the cross hatching. Execute in the Japanese version looks way, way better. I don't know what they were thinking with the US one. The US sprite has one massive main egg. This design was never used in the future. Nothing else to say other than the Japanese one clearly wins out here. Executor is just angled slightly different in the US version. Cubone has a neutral pose in the Japanese version, looking great, whereas in the US version he has an attacking pose, 
and looks a little more bubbly, not quite as well proportioned as his Japanese counterpart. Marowak in the Japanese version is looking a lot more bubbly. The posing allows him to look a little more slim in the US version. Hitmonlee in Japan has crossed eyes. The pose in the US version looks a lot better. Hitmonchan in the Japanese version has a very odd pose where he's in a defensive punching pose. It does not show off the character well at all. Very solid change over to the US where it's at least angled somewhat so that you have a better idea of what proportions and features this character has. Licky Tongue in the Japanese version once again has a very very bubbly design. It clearly was altered slightly to look a little slimmed down and better proportioned in the US. Coughing has a weird mistake in the US version, having the skull and crossbones on its forehead instead of its stomach, making the Japanese version the definitive design for coughing. Wheezing in the Japanese version does a much better job of exemplifying the skull and crossbones on its stomach. The angling of wheezing in the US version is much different. Rhyhorn is just angled slightly better in the US version. It better exemplifies the depth of the model, even though it's not all that different from the Japanese one. Rhydon, once again in the Japanese version, is looking really bulky. This was cleaned up for the US version. Chansey in the Japanese version has a neutral pose, whereas in the US, she has a more angled pose and seems to be tilted slightly. Tangela in the US version seems to be walking, whereas in the Japanese version, it's in a neutral pose. This one's pretty funny, so the Kangaskong in the US version seems to be shouting, whereas in the Japanese version, it's the baby. Horsey in the Japanese version is poorly proportioned, whereas in the US version, it's done slightly better. Cedra in the US version has a more dynamic pose, but in the Japanese version, it shows off the features of the Pokemon much better. Goldeen in the US version looks a lot more sassy, whereas the Japanese version just looks more like it's just a fish in water. Sea King in the US version looks like a flopping fish, whereas in the Japanese version, it looks like it's seen some stuff. It looks like it's seen some stuff. Staryu it looks incredibly similar between the two versions, but the US one is angled down slightly. Starmie must have been very tough on the artist because nothing is really that changed between the two sprites except for the jewel. That's literally it. They also removed the cross hatching in the US version. Mr. Mime between the two versions just has two different miming poses. I would say that the Japanese version hides the fact that the details don't look that great. The eyes on the US version is smaller, making this early design even more bizarre. Scyther looks great between the two versions, the wings on the Japanese one has cross hatching, and overall the character is at a different pose between the two. Jinx in the US version seems to be winking at the player, whereas in the Japanese version the arms seem to be shifted a lot more to one direction. Electabuzz has different poses, especially between the arms. Magmar has a more dynamic pose in the US version, whereas the Japanese version does a much better job of showing off all its features. Pinsir's sprite just seems to be horizontally flipped, and then small features on the sprite seem to be slightly altered, such as the eyes and a few pixels on the hands. Tauros is much better proportioned in the Japanese version. The US one seems to have a very tiny head by comparison. It also lacks the detail of the multiple jewels on its forehead like it does for its Japanese counterpart. Magikarp here just has two different angles, but they're both pretty great. Gyarados in the US version has a much better looking design. The angle looks good in the Japanese one, but the face is really off. Lapras in the Japanese version once again has a very chunky bubbly design that was clearly tweaked in the US version. The eyes especially got a nice fix. Ditto doesn't really have a very consistent shape, so it's hard to say which one would be better here, but the poses are very, very different. Eevee in the Japanese version looks really angry, whereas the US one literally has a smile on its face. Vaporeon in the Japanese version is looking a little bit more bubbly and chunky, once again, tweaked and thinned out in the US version. Jolteon has a much more dynamic pose in the Japanese version. The US version has its mouth closed. Flareon in the Japanese version seems like it's ready to pounce, whereas in the US version it's just laying down. Porygon in the Japanese version looks a lot better. Over on the US side, it seems to be misshapen and its eyes don't look quite right. Ammonite in the US version just seems to have its hands on its hips. And once again, outside of a few tweaks, the designs are fairly identical. Omastar in the US version looks like he's ready to dance, whereas in the Japanese version he looks like he's ready to hug. Kabuto is very different between the two. In the US version, we see the top of Kabuto, whereas in the Japanese version we see the bottom of the Kabuto. Kabutops in the Japanese version seems to be angled a lot better. The front facing angle of the US one is just a little bit odd looking. Aerodactyl in the US version seems to be downward gliding, whereas in the Japanese version, he seems to be flapping his wings. Snorlax in the Japanese version seems to have a very symmetrical design, whereas in the US version, there is this dynamic pose where he's leaning backwards. 
Articuno in the Japanese version has its mouth closed, whereas in the US version, he looks a little more cartoony and its mouth is open. Zapdos's angling is only slightly different, but as a result, it does make the sprite different between the two. Moltres's face is very different between the two. In the US version, its eyes are beady, whereas in the Japanese version, you could either make the case that it's looking towards the floor or looking very depressed. Dratini looks a little more cartoony in the US version, whereas it has this cute yet elegant look in the Japanese version. Dragonair looks straight up sinister in the US version, I don't know what was going on with those eyes, but the eyes in the Japanese version are also kind of strange, looking like jewels. The design of the ears are also completely different, with a swirl on the Japanese version that is absent in the US version. Dragonite seems to have some serious gamer neck in the Japanese version, whereas it looks a lot more menacing in the US version. Obviously the final design would be a mixture between the two, lacking the gamer neck and looking a little more innocent. Mewtwo in the US version has its gamer neck now, and looks absolutely fantastic in the Japanese version. It's only a shame that we didn't have something like that in the US, because it's very well proportioned, it does a very good job of looking like the Mewtwo we know today. We discussed Mew earlier, and all I can say at this point is that between the two, I think that the US one does look a lot better. This vid in particular took a lot of work, so thank you so much for watching the whole thing. I also have similar episodes for Earthbound and Zelda 2. It would be awesome if you watched it. I know you just sunk in 30 minutes, so it's all good. Also, if you use Twitter, I'm going to leave my Twitter handle down below. I do all sorts of stuff like announcements for streams, and I keep it real 100. So, you know, thanks again. You take care.